the Hedy's inequality regions. And to explain to you what these things are, you need to cast your mind back to when we were just dealing with regular old single variable inequalities like this. I could say x is greater than or equal to 3, and then I could represent that visually on the number line. If I've got a single variable, x, then I just draw a number line for that variable, and I find the space that represents all of the solutions for x is greater than or equal to 3. You can see I've already put on the most important number. 1, 2, 3, there's the point that's relevant, my boundary. And then what am I going to do in this case? Yeah, I saw, I saw the colour again. I'm going to put a, a field circle here. And then I'm going to say from this boundary, which direction am I going to go in? To the right, x is greater than or equal to 3, which conveniently, conveniently is the same direction as this inequality is facing in. Whatever. So this blue line with an arrow indicates any point on this number line in the blue area satisfies this inequality. So far, so good. Okay. Yeah. Why is zero so Is that like you don't have to have zero? You should have zero. You should have zero. Um, just like I mean, the fact that you've got three, three means three only has meaning because zero is there. Three means it's three units to the right of zero, and negative three means it's three units to the left of zero. Everything takes reference from zero. Just like on the Cartesian plane, which I'm going to draw sh shortly, everything takes reference from the origin, like 1, 1 only has meaning because the origin is there. Right, now as I pointed out, I mean this colour, as I pointed out, this is a single variable inequality. A single variable. So what would happen if we had more than one var variable? For example, uh, yeah, I'll stay with this. Let's do this one. So, what would this be? This is no longer a single variable. This is two variables. I guess we could call it bivariate, but um, that's usually an adjective we reserve for statistics. If you've got a single variable, you just have a single axis. Well, if you've got two variables, a single axis is not going to cut it. So we're going to need, for two variables, two axes. And because we've chosen x and y, we can represent these on the Cartesian plane. So underneath here, go ahead and pop in a pair of axes. Now, what I want you to notice is this. I'm running out of colours rapidly, but we'll do our best. For the inequality x is greater than or equal to 3, x equals 3 is the boundary value for this part that I shaded. Does that make sense? x equals 3 is the boundary. Right? So when you have a look at this guy here, I'm looking for all the values of x and y for which this statement is true. And the place where I'm going to start is that just like x equals 3 was the boundary for this, y equals this will be the boundary for my new two-dimensional inequality. Now, just like with inequalities on the number line, we have something different for including the boundary or not including the boundary. It's the same for these guys in two dimensions. The equivalent of a hollow circle is a dotted line. I know that's a bit confusing because we use dotted lines in quantum geometry for something else, namely asymptotes, but we just run out of ways to do that. So we're also going to use a dotted line for this. So y equals 2x plus 1 looks something like this, I guess. And I'm putting it in dotted. Yeah, you get the idea. I'm putting it in dotted because if you have a look here, this tells me that the boundary is not included, as opposed to this, which would be solid. So there you go, I've got my boundary. Now think about this. There's an x and there's a y. So that means you need an x value and a y value for which this statement is either true or it's false. So for example, Think of a pair of coordinates, right? Think of something like, say, 3, 4. 3, 4. Does this set of coordinates satisfy the inequality or not? 3, 4. Yes, no. No. <laughs> yeah. no. 
3 comma 4. So remember, 3 comma 4 is shorthand for x equals this and y equals this. Yes? So if you have a look at you substitute in, the left hand side, actually, for reasons that will become clear in a second, I'm actually start with the right hand side first. The right hand side is going to be equal to what? It's going to be 2 times 3 plus 1, which is 7. The left hand side, on, on the other hand, is going to just be 4. So you can see in this case the left hand side is less than the right hand side. Do you agree? And that's what I wanted, isn't it? That's the direction of the inequality facing in the correct direction. That's why I started with the right hand side, by the way. So therefore, 3 comma 4 satisfies my inequality. So where is 3 comma 4? Um, well, this is, this is 1, isn't it? So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, I don't know, it's somewhere up there-ish. Okay. So 3 comma 4, it works. Okay. In fact, what you'll find is, because this is the boundary, any point you pick on this side of the boundary will also satisfy the inequality. Here's another easy, easy one you can put in. Uh, zero, zero, the origin. In fact, I'm going to encourage you to choose the origin whenever you possibly can. Zero, zero also satisfies the inequality. Can you see why? Is zero less than one? The answer is yes. So this point also satisfies the inequality. Now, rather than just draw x's and put ticks next to them, <laughs> being that I have an infinite set of points that satisfies this inequality, just like here, I'm going to shade the appropriate part that includes all of those points. So I'm going to use this color. Everything on this side, you can say to the right of this line, or alternatively, you can say everywhere below this line. This is the region, the region can sit in two dimensions, that represents this inequality, right? This is the region that represents this inequality, which is why we call these inequality regions. It's just like what you were doing on the number line, except in two dimensions rather than one. 